hope you're ready for me. Now gather round. I'm a new fool in town, and my sound's laid down by the underground. Chef, Chef, how you doing, my man? Going on, man. How are you? Good, bro. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show, man. Uh, I love your work, and it's an honor to have you on, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. It's a pleasure, man. I love your work. Yeah, well, we're just getting started. Uh, so a couple of things, man, before, for our viewers, tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, how you got into cooking. What inspired you? So my name is uh, Peter Martinez. I'm a Cuban chef from New Jersey, uh, West New York, New Jersey, to be exact. Um, got into cooking. Um, my father was a chef like 29 years. My grandfather was a chef for 40 years. I love um, they, worked at, they worked at a lot of prestigious restaurants. Uh, you know, last one that my dad was known for was uh, Victor's Cafe, which is a Cuban restaurant in uh, Midtown Manhattan in the uh, Times Square district. Uh, my grandfather, you know, my late grandfather, he has passed away. Um, he was he came from Cuba and was working at the Pegasus, which is uh, in the Meadowlands restaurant mm -hmm. in the Meadowlands racetrack. So it's a it's a racetrack of horses. And he worked in the upper uh, section where like the it was like the fancier restaurant the pegasus I, you know i i like that let me let, let's pause a little bit i mean i love that because it's a different route and i love telling the stories because most people think when you're latino and you're cooking that there's only one way but there's different ways of how in how we got inspired to get into it my grandfather left china when he was 10 you know very young went to nicaragua yeah you know, met my grandmother, Nicaragüense, and they started, they started a restaurant <clears throat> serving Chinese and Nicaraguan food. It's still there 60 years later, ran by my aunt and, um, you know, my cousins. And the point I'm trying to make is like your story, Rino, and he went into that restaurant and then your father, uh, you know, obviously a landmark Victor's Cafe. And it then it went to you. So I kind of like it because Victor's Cafe, Midtown Manhattan, you, it's it's a different vibe. It's a different customer than it is to being in El Barrio, you know? Yeah. Uh, El Barrio is about serving community. You're in Manhattan. Obviously, it was before it became Midtown, you know? Um, but that's kind of cool. So how was it growing up in a family that was in the industry? Tell me how that was. Um, so it was, it was uh, amazing because, you know, food was always important. Food was always a topic. And, you know, although growing up, I didn't choose that route, I kind of had it as a second nature because they was like, they would be like, oh, ven para acá, voy a cocinar un bistec. Yo quiero que tú veas como yo lo sazono. Yo quiero que tú veas como yo le echo la pimienta. Quiero que tú sepas, para un día, tú vas a tener que cocinar. Y, y a lo mejor no voy a estar yo aquí. I yeah, I hate when they say that. I won't, Don't I you hate when they say that? But don't you hate that? A lo mejor no voy a estar aquí. My grandma used to say that and it used to make me cry. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, for me, I took it more like, a, dude, you're going to starve if, if I'm not here. Um, <laughs> so I kind of took that as them. All right, I guess this is time to pay attention because if at any moment he isn't there, like not in the sense that he's going to die or like anything negative, it's just that they're busy. They're yeah. busy. And I know my dad as for always being busy. He would He would miss holidays. He would miss like, he would miss weekends. He, you know, he's a restaurant working in a restaurant. His days off was what I have off now. It's like Monday and Tuesday. As he got up in the, you know, as he got up in the ranks and he worked for longer periods of time, he got that Sunday off that he would enjoy with the family and that that resting on Monday day and then back to the grind on Tuesday. And so, my grandfather had the same schedule always. A hundred percent. So what was it? What age did you say? You know what? I want to. I want to get into the workforce cooking. Um. It was not too long ago. It was literally like seven or eight years ago now. Um, you know, I was a young knucklehead. I bumped my head a lot of times. I was into the wrong things. Um, even before I got into the wrong things, I, I was always a, a, a hustler. Like, I always worked. I always wanted to to make my own money. So that way I don't trouble, like, my family or my parents or asking them. Like, I, w I would feel weird. Like, I would feel inadequate when I used to say, Dad, I need $5 for lunch. Because... Mm -hmm. Him just reaching in his pocket to me felt so weird. It was like, why am I asking somebody else for what they have in their pocket? It just felt super weird. You so want to immediately create, I got, you want to create your own business? Um, I, yeah, I wanted my own my own income. Like I, I worked at the newspaper for for the company stacking newspapers, and then they would put that plastic on it so that they could deliver it to the stores. Yeah. I did that for a while. 
Um, then after that, I, I got the knowledge of uh, going to summer camps and getting paid to do like picking up garbage in the parks and stuff like that. Um, I then from there, I went to uh, uh, Whole Foods Market was when I fell in love with food. I worked at Whole Foods Market for 12 years and I fell in love with food because they were looking at food in a way that us as Latinos, we're not looking at food because, mm -hmm. you know, people in our country, they're like, yo, we grow food. Our food is all good. Coming to this country, they manipulate food so much. They put so many preservatives, so many things. And, and we kind of forget the origin of where the food comes from. So Whole Foods was like organic, conventional. They're making sure that the quality of their food is great. Things that we didn't care about because we're like, boy, I can comer, I hambre, I can comer. There's yeah. times that where there wasn't no food. So we weren't thinking like about the luxury of having like the utmost quality of food. We were thinking about having food. Yeah, just want to eat, you know? So how, yeah. you, were there for, you, you were there, um, you were working for somebody. What were you then thinking? Like, what was your aha moment that you knew you were a good cook? Um, so my wife was the one that kind of brought it to my attention. She said, listen, you're the only person that I know that, that works as a technician. At this time, I'm working for a Korean company called Daewoo. I was an electronic technician. Mm -hmm. um, I would fix like washers, dryers, VCRs, microwaves. Um, he's like, you're the only dude that I know that's doing a job that you don't even, that you hate. Every day you come home and complain, but yet you do these little side jobs for people, for barbecues, uh, for people like that ask you like, yo, I love the way that you cook that rice or this and that. Can you, can you cater it for me? And you're getting this side money, but doing what you love, but you, you, your main thing is what you hate. She's like, you need to like, I think you need to change. Like you need to do something. Why don't you go to culinary school? She put that idea in my head. I'm like, oh, I should go to culinary school. Cause then maybe I'll, I'll have that as like a diploma. Cause you know, growing up, everybody's thinking like, you got to have a diploma in order to be somebody and order to do something. You better have that diploma. So she put that in my head and, you know, having that old school mentality, I said, word, that would definitely like triple my worth. I would definitely be valuable then. Yeah. So I remember one day, December 22nd, it was like three days before Christmas. It was snowing. Um, I got into the office. I'm there. Like, so it's a, it's, I'm a technician. So what I do is I pick up the phone. It's like an office with booths. You pick up the call. You kind of give technical advice on the phone. And sometimes, you know, you need to go out on the field to fix the equipment. So that day was December 22nd. I pick up the phone. The lady starts screaming crazy. She's like, this is a piece of junk. I'm going to throw it out my house. I'll throw it out my window if you don't come pick it up. And I said, I hung up the call. Like I, I knew it in my body that I was just like, dude, this is going to stress me out again. And then I'm going to have a shitty day because usually like I would gauge my day versus how it started. So usually if I don't have no calls and then all of a sudden I look at my list and I have places to go, the day is kind of calm because I'm like, I jump in the car and the truck and I go and I sit and I, and I meet people and I interact. The first call was a complaint and the lady was livid. I hung it up. As soon as, and you know, these calls are monitored by, by, yeah. the, by the supervisors and all that. He goes, hey, did you just disconnect that call? And I go, yes, I did. And he goes, why? And I'm like, because I'm done. Thank you. And I gave him my hand. He shook my hand. He's like, no, no, no. You're just probably having a bad day. I'm like, and I told him, I'm like, no, actually the opposite. I'm having a good day. I'm done here, man. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. And then from there, I, at this point, I had recently moved in with my fiance, which, you know, which is my wife now. Um. And I had nothing planned. Three days before Christmas, no job lined up, no money saved up. It, I, was I was living check to check. I just quit. Um, so I'm thinking like, wow, I'm about to tell, you know, my fiance, like, yeah, I, I just quit my job. I don't got nothing lined up. So I need to come up with something. So what I did was in the parking lot of the, of the uh, job that I just left, I started applying on Craigslist. Literally a one-liner. Listen, I don't have any resume, but I know how to cook. Let me know. I would like to work for your kitchen. Did it like 19, 20 times. Sat there thinking like, what am I going to do? I got to get, I guess I'm going to go home. I start driving on my way home thinking what I'm going to tell my fiance. I'm like, I don't even want to tell her. She should be happy for me. I'm thinking like, she should be happy for me. But at the same time, like, we have no money saved. So it's like, damn, Peter, you just did this a lo loco. So, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of nervous. But at the same time, I'm like, she probably would, is going to be happy. I'm not sure yet. So next thing you know, I start getting emails. Um, people were like, who the hell is this? Like responding, like, what are you? What the hell is this a joke? Other people were like, 
do you have anything to show? And at that time, all I had was my Instagram. So I said, uh, you can check my Instagram. And they were like, okay. You know, I call, well, they'll give the number. We spoke on the phone. They were like, I have my Instagram. Why don't you check my Instagram? They would go on their phone, check my Instagram. They were like, wow, it looks really great. So I set up three interviews. Hold on, hold on, real quick, real quick, real quick. So for our viewers, how important for someone who wants to grow their brand, grow their business, or try to get into an industry is, in, is social media. Is it important? Absolutely important. I'm telling you right now, your resume is nowadays, your resume is your Instagram. Pretty much that's that, that I, it, I've noticed that since the day that I started it, people, even jobs nowadays, they're, they're like, all right, you want a job with us? Cool. Do you have any social medias or anything so that they can kind of gauge who you are? What kind of person are you? Are you here posting uh, about revolution and like and war or negative things? They're not going to hire you. They're not yeah. going to hire and, you. And it's like you and I don't know each other. I reached out and I'm sure you scan comida. So you're like, okay, this is kind of cool. Yeah. It's a little different. A Chinese, it's a little different. Chinese guy speaking Spanish, but I'm gonna take that risk. Not just... All right. <laughs> no, listen. I I am a Chinese guy <laughs> talking Spanish. Yeah. So I was like, yo, we look the same. I I saw your show. I love your content. Um, you know, your questions are amazing. It, it's 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 it, it's something relatable, and yeah. and it's two people that are a alike. So we see alike. So it's like we gotta we gotta we gotta yeah. grow together. So so no doubt, I appreciate that. So they saw your Instagram. Who hired you? So they saw me on Instagram. The first interview was a country club extremely far from where I was living. I was living in Edgewater. This thing was like in Glendale, some re some crazy far town. It was a country club. The guy tested me too. He's like, all right, so I see your Instagram. You know, you're look, you're, you're, you look like a well-put guy because obviously I, I was, uh, I had a, uh, just left the office. So I had a button down and I had like some slacks and I had like some boat shoes. He's like, you're a well put guy. Um, you know, what, why don't you cook me an egg? And I was like, in my head, I, I you know, at this point, I don't know about the culinary world. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm there like, cook you an egg. I like you serious. And he was like, you know that you could tell a lot by the way the person cooks an egg. And I was like, I, I eat eggs every morning. You tell me how you want your egg. He was like, oh, why don't you do me a sunny side up? And I'm like, well, that happens to be my favorite. So are you sure that's what you want? He's like, yeah. I was like, no problem. Cooked him a fried egg. I was like, how do you like it? Because I like my my little my little quinitas. I like them nice yeah, and crispy. Exactly. He was like, he's like, he's like, well, that's the, that's the perfect egg. I mean, that's up to you how you want to give it to me. You give it to me, I'm going to judge it how you give it. I was like, I I'll give it to you how I like it. And I gave it to him and he was like, the egg was runny and there was no clear. He was like crispy, crispy edges. He was like, this is really good. He's like, this is really good. And I like your seasoning because we're Latinos. We don't season just like un poquito de sal. I actually decided to up it a little bit. So I put a little bit of salt, pepper, and I dropped a little bit of cumin in there. So he mm. could be like, oh, I need that song ahí que está. So he was like, wow, I like that. I like that cumin. Uh, that little bit of cumin that you put in there, it actually took the eggs somewhere else. I actually, and I, I, actually like, yeah. I, I actually put cuban in my chimichurri. Yeah. It's a toque special, you know, because I don't want it to just be citrus and garlic and acid. A mí me gusta el comino ahí, you know? So that's my secret. Yeah, so okay. So then what, he loved it? You got hired? So he was like, so listen, this is what we have available for you, you know? And he, he offered me like a good amount of money and i was like wow i think i'm i already landed something um he was like yeah so we're gonna we're gonna when do you want to start i was like oh he's like you could start this weekend we have a banquet this and that so i start saying yeah you know what yeah i think i'm gonna take it i'm gonna take it bro on the way back from the place it was like 45 minutes i don't know something started going in my head like thinking like wow this is far this is really far either and then at the same time that i'm thinking it's far all of a sudden a track the jam traffic it was so much traffic that i was looking at this like wow imagine leaving work tired i gotta deal with traffic yeah i gotta deal with another 45 minute drive i'm there like i gotta check my email let me see who else is here yeah i start looking i start looking um you know somebody called me oh that's what i forgot to say somebody called me when i was on my way out from havana rum room uh, the owner called me. He's like, hey, yeah. and at this point, I'm kind of excited. I'm like, yeah, I just got a job. So this guy called me and I'm like, and it's at a country club and it's paying great money. So I'm thinking like, hey, man, nah, thank you for the call, man. I appreciate you. But I, I, I took a position. And then the guy was like, oh, I, it, it was interesting how you emailed. 
And, you know, it was a one-liner, and I'd never seen anything like that. It was very <laughs> brave. And I'm like, I was like, oh, thank you, man. I appreciate you. But, you know, I'll keep you guys in mind for the future. He was like, yeah, no problem. Just if anything changes, call me. So I hung up on that guy. And I'm telling you, like minutes later, it was so weird because it was like 20, maybe 15 minutes later, I get into this traffic jam. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh, my God, I just told somebody I already took a job. I don't even know if I'm going to take that other job because yeah. I already told him yes. But at the same time, I'm like, look at this mess. This is going to be like, how long am I going to last in this place? I call the guy back. I'm like, hey, how you doing, man? I'm, I'm really sorry that I told you I took a position. Um, this, this is, I tell him, I'm like, I know this is sounding extremely crazy. It's a one-liner. I just hung up on you telling you I got a job right now. I'm calling you back. Listen, is the opportunity still available. He's like, come in, come in. No, I totally understand. Things happen in life. Come in and let's talk. So I finally make it to the place. It's in North Bergen, New Jersey. It was literally up the hill from where I lived at in uh, Edgewater. And it's called the place. It was a Cuban restaurant, recently opened, nice bar called Havana Rum Room. I go there. The guy's sitting there doing his paperwork. And he's like, Peter? And I'm like, yeah, how you doing? Yeah, nice to meet you. He's like, oh, so what's going on? So, like, talk to me about you because this is so interesting. It, it, it's like it's so much back and forth. And you're like, you're taken, but you're not taken. But you don't even have a resume. So I'm like. I feel like I'm chasing a ghost here. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's not, you're not chasing a ghost. I'm here now. I'm, I don't have a resume, like I stated. I don't have any experience, like, or say, per se, in the kitchen, but I know how to cook. I know how to do anything you tell me to right now. And he's like, I was like, oh, and I was like, and I, I can show you my Instagram. So he starts going through, he goes, let me see your Instagram. He got, I give him my phone, he's going through it, and he's like, wow. He's like, well, well, that, you have no experience. And I'm like, no, no, I, I just cook for, for fun at home. And, you know, I, you know, I just recently left the job that I had. And then he was like, so what's going on with you? Like, well, you just left the job. I'm like, it's a career change. I told him it's a career. I was a technician. I was miserable. I hated it. So this is, this is, this is it right here. This is my first step. And he was just like, all right, what do you want to do, bro? Get to work then. And I'm there like, well, I'm, I'm like in a button down, bro. And like, how long, ago, how long ago was that? This was, I want to say about eight years ago, maybe nice. seven or eight years ago. I was like, I'm going to button down. He's like, go, then get to work, bro. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go change and come back. And then the rest was history. That's seven good. months later, I was running that place. Seven months later, I was running that place. Their, their, their sales went up by like 15%. Because one of the things I'm really good at is promotion. I like, I know how to promote. I know how to sell. And I definitely know how to get people in the door. You know, it's, it's, it's something that I'm really good at, I guess, from like the street and hustling that I know how to talk. So it, 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 it the, the sales went crazy, crazy. And the yeah, guy you, ended now, up. Now, now it's actually, you're growing a brand. That's, that's what it's called today. Back then it was yes. sales and marketing, get people to the door. Now it's growing a brand because, uh, you know, again, it's, it's an awesome story, but I also want our viewers to learn that your story could be their story. Instagram, social media, growing a brand, growing a business, because here you went through a career change and look at you now. So I kind of want to fast forward that, right? So you did go there, you're running the kitchen, you're earning your confidence. Talk to us about when you want to decide to go to TV for a little bit. So I was, now I graduated culinary school. I won this competition in school. This, this, this competition in school sparked it because in my school, you know, there's so many kids that watch a lot of like Food Network, and and me, I'm I was more like into like what I'm going on in my life. Like I like I I collect sneakers, you know. I just recently got engaged. I got friends that are into fashion. Uh, I, so the the Food Network thing was like a side thing that I used to bump into occasionally on the TV, and I'd be like, wow, yeah, these people these people are doing it on camera. Like just it looks crazy. It looks intense. That. I joined the competition in school that I, that I said it to myself. I'm there like, I don't know. I win, lose a draw. I'm going to try. I'm going to see if I can get in because, you know, there's over hundreds of kids going to join this competition. I might not get picked. I might get picked. I don't want to set my heart on things because I hate being disappointed. You know, so I said, you know, I signed up. Ah, let's see what happens. I signed up. Next thing you know, I start getting emails for this thing. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's becoming real. This competition is becoming real come up with a dish that you think that will blow the judge's mind. And then from there, they're going to look at make? all those What'd you papers. make? What'd you make? So I made a, um, a waffle, like a, a waffle wrap lobster manure sauce 
with uh, crispy asparagus with a saffron aioli dipping sauce. So it was basically like a lobster in a wrap waffle. Like this is innovative to me because this this didn't come out now. People using uh, waffles as a wrap till recently. I just saw people yeah. doing that, mm-hmm. and I did that seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the, the the judges saw that on paper, and they were like, "Damn, what the hell? Can he pull this off? This is a freaking culinary student. Yeah. How much does this guy know? How much does he know? Like, well, this is like this is like freaking quality food. Like he's talking here. Let's yeah. see if he can pull it off. So next thing you know, I get an email. You're in the top. Uh, 10 uh, contestants so you might make it into the competition to the top uh, four I think it was three people a guy competed with yeah so it was four people competing for this uh, two thousand dollar cash prize and and then and a free trip to Portland Maine so next thing you know I'm here cooking and then they're they're weeding out I guess in the background they're weeding out um, who's going to be in this competition next thing you know they said you you're you're a finalist you made it to the competition so I'm like oh this is real. Now, now I got to cook. Now mm-hmm. I got to sh- So next thing you know, I'm like, I'm really in the competition. So listen, I, listen, bro. I freaking, when I tell you that I, my, I got my wife up to here comiendo langosta. I was cooking this lobster dish three times a week <laughs> till the That's competition. Good, That's good, yeah. Yeah. So, cause I wanted it to be muscle memory. I wanted it to be like a pickup in a restaurant. Like, esto, esto, esto va con esto, y esto, esto con esto, and that boom, boom, boom. Like, Pickup time, really fast. Pickup time. So I kept trying to shorten the pickup time. Pickup time. Pickup time. Because I, 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 in my head, I'm thinking, how is this competition gonna be? Are they gonna give me the lobster tail ready because they know it's a lobster tail? Are they gonna try to like make the time harder for me? They're gonna give me an una langosta entera, which yeah. I've never, I, at this point in my life, excuse me, I, 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 I was new to. Yeah. Breaking down the lobster because I was obviously a culinary student and the way that we did it in the house they call un mallet or yeah. cosa esa de papel. so i was just like all right let's see what they're gonna throw at me let's see what happens and if they if they throw something crazy at me i'm just gonna just rip the tail off take out the tail uh, you know blanch it take it the tail blah, 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 whatever when i get to the competition they got the three live lobsters i eat and i'm like oh they did it to me bro they did it to me yo i i competed my heart out everybody else competed their heart out and and I came out on top. I, I came Good. out on top one because of, you know, the the presentation was amazing. It was more. It, it was it was the competition was for a beer called Alagash. Alag, it's an amazing beer. Um, and it's a it's a local beer from Portland, Maine. And I used the beer inside the, the sauces. Yeah. So they were like, this dude's elevating everything, and I won. So you- from there on, I was like, I need to compete more. I think I could win more. So how was your experience? No, I love that. Like, muscle memory is what I want people to get out of that story. Muscle memory preparation, you know, it. because I'll, I'll connect with you later too. You see, I, I have muscle memory too on everything you do in business or personal. And that's how we achieve that momentum, gain that momentum. So how was your experience on TV um, and what did it do for your brand? So the, the first uh, thing that I approached for TV was, um, was cooks versus cons. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw an email for it um, from this casting company, and I said, "You know what? Let me try this. Let's see what this is. The, the storyline looks yeah. funny." Uh, I remember that. See what it, I, I'm not sure if it was Cooks versus Cons or Chopped first. One of those two w- was first, but let's. I'll say the Cooks versus Cons one because that experience was was a, it was it was it was like an all day experience. It was like. Wake up at six in the morning, barely, you don't have anything in your stomach. I try to try to eat a little bit of cereal. I start thinking in my head, like, I don't even know what to expect. I get to this location. It's like a warehouse. Um, they have all these cameramen. They're telling you how to move. They're telling you what they're going to want from you. They want your personality um, to, to shine. They want you, you to over-exaggerate who you are yeah. and, and, and kind of show your character. And in my head, I'm thinking, what does that even mean? Like, don't I already do that? Don't that don't, isn't that captivated you? To, to, to put me on the show. And so I'm thinking, I don't know, I don't know. And then when I start hearing like, cut, can you say this a little stronger? Can you do this? That was a little kind of a turnoff for, for me at that point. Cause I'm thinking like, I thought I was gonna come in here, cook a good dish and freaking get out and, and, and see if I win or, you know, see if I win and then get out. See if you win so, because of the talent. And now you're realizing it's a show. It has yes. a lot to do with personality and what they can portray to the viewers, right? 
Exactly. So it's like you have to be a well-rounded character yeah. to win. It's, you have to have like the, 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 the character of a winner. Like you're, you have to really, really highlight who you are, your passion, your love, your drive. You have to exude that, exude yeah. it. Because that day, well, I'm thinking I'm going to be on the show. It was literally a competition between about 80 chefs all in that building that thinking that they were going to be on the show, but that was just to weed out who's going to be in it, who's not going to be in it. So the minute that they, they try to get to record a little bit, they're acting like the show is on. So I'm, I'm at, they're acting as the show is on, but we're really just competing. And then after, the, after they do like all these little skits or whatnot for, for, for the show, they were like, all right, you guys are going to compete now against each other. Whoever has the most creative dish, we're going to pull out and we'll grab you guys. If you don't make it for, for the season that's coming up, season one, then you'll be in season two and season three. So they pretty much casted for the entire season got that it. day. Got that it. day. Um, so I got, I got lucky. I mean, I did great. I remember I created a, a, a cauliflower fried rice that was inspired by some Thai food that I was eating like that week um, with, the, with, the, with the fried quail egg on top. And with the, with the uh, I did like a, a steak, like an Asian inspired steak. And they loved it because they were like, wait, this is not rice. I'm like, no, no, it's not rice. I, put, I buzzed cauliflower and I made a fried rice like out that. of it. I like, how, I like how you grew up Cuban, but you are basically cooking on what inspiration is, even if it's outside culinary. I always say that food has no, no barriers. That's the no. best way to, to kind of heal a society or better a society, you know? So, so that was good. So that was good. Now, what did, after you're done with TV, what did it do? Tell me what you're working on now. Tell me your business. Tell me where you want to be in two years. Um, so as at the moment, um, I just came off of uh, Hell's Kitchen season 19. Um, I decided to go back to TV after Chopped, um, which I said I was not going to do any more TV. I was like, this is not for me. I, I'm more of a chef. I'm more about passion. I'm more about presenting, you know, guests with my love and, you know, and seeing their expressions when they're like, wow, this, this is different than what I had at, um, at PSN. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is so different. So um, I, I've, I've been working on my own company uh, called the Digital Food Truck, which is a company that I started during last quarantine, you know, March, last February, March. So we're, we're, go we're rolling up on a year of, uh, of the Digital Food Truck. Um, it was during quarantine. I was thinking like my restaurant closed. They, they, they took away my position, obviously, because of COVID. Um, so I lost my job. So I'm here. I'm here taking care of my kids. I'm here cooking for my family. I'm, I, I'm literally, I'm telling you, giving my, my one-year-old upscale carrot puree with this and that because the passion's still there and I, I have nothing to do with it. So I was like, what am I going to do? I'm tired of ordering uh, Uber Eats. I'm pretty sure that my neighbors are, are cause you know, I would chat with my neighbors next door and I'd be like, you know, what you guys been doing? They're like, yeah, we order Uber Eats. We get, we get Grubhub, but we have eaten everything around here already. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wow, I need to capitalize on that. Everybody's tired of what they're eating. So how can I bring the restaurant to them? So what I did was I was like, you know what? And I don't even need it to be that serious. So I was like, and what do I want in my life? I want a food truck. So in my life, I started grabbing all the things that I want and all the things that I was doing. And I put it together and I said, the digital food truck, I'm always online. Yeah. I'm always promoting big time. So I decided to create a company that's based online that gives you the feel of, you know, elevated food truck food in your home, in your party, in your event, in your gathering. It, 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 it was like, I was like, this is, this is mind blowing. I, I even, when I thought about it, I'm like, this, I don't, I don't see anybody doing this. I need to, I need to capitalize. So what did I do? I, I created a menu immediately. I created a menu. I sent it to my neighbors. My neighbor is a doctor. Um, the, the, uh, and then the husband is like a, a, a technician for, for a cheese company. And I was like, what do you think about this menu? He's like, well, I want to order this, this, and this, and this. I was like, all right, perfect. I made it for them. They start eating it. They were like, this is going to blow up. This yeah. is going to blow up because it's not like what, it's not Uber Eats. It's basically like they went to a restaurant. Uh, they order uh, it and you deliver it. And I deliver it or they pick it up. So they I like, like it. went to, like, I, I feel like I went to a restaurant or a food truck and I got their food and it's at my door. So what's the radius? What, what's the radius that you serve there? So at the moment I'm doing the tri-state. Um, I've gone okay. as far as like uh, borderline Pennsylvania. I've gone to Connecticut. 
um, you know, these are, these are, you know, parties that I've done where I'm like traveling and, you know, the food has traveled great and well and perfectly because I just think ahead. I think about where I'm going to be traveling and how, how far in the cooking process do I need to get to? Everything, to everything you're saying is great for our viewers because those are things they need to think about right now after coronavirus people are going to eat differently they're going to want to eat more at their house they're going to want to learn how to cook more and this digital food truck allows them to have restaurant style because you don't become a good cook overnight and then you could also advance your cooking lessons virtually you can develop a product line and then a cookbook i see that in what you've got you know so that's dope. And I congratulate you. you. And we're going to have you on the show every 90 days for an update on your digital food truck. Now, let's, oh, let's, have some, let's have some fun questions, okay? Give me your pet peeve in the industry. In the industry, I think my biggest, my, like, the biggest pet peeve is the egos. Mm -hmm. The egos. Like, don't, don't try to portray this really big ego this mr know-it-all chef and then when your line is falling apart you don't go back there to help yeah you scream and scream and scream but your hands are not on the food that yeah. to me is the biggest pet peeve these like th these verbal chefs these these pen pushing chefs mm -hmm. i'm a chef that comes from the trenches my yep. first restaurant my, my real first restaurant job was at apartment 78 I was a dishwasher because, you know, I was like, you know, I, I need, I need a job. I need something. I, I started dishwashing. This is before I got the job at Havana Rum. I, I took a job as a dishwasher because I said, I need to see what they're doing. This is before I went to culinary school. Even yeah. Before I went to culinary school, I was like, I need to see how they're moving in there. And that kind of pushed me to go to culinary school because I wanted to move like the chef was moving, like professionally, like this chef was, you know, the chef that, that took me on as a dishwasher. This guy's an animal in the kitchen. He he would tell you like, yo, let me show you how to do this, bro. Because it yeah. seems like you're having trouble. I want to show you so that you can see it. And then you can do, you know, imitate exactly what I just showed you. Yeah, so I got, I learned from him. He was so not a chef that would be like, how long, how long, you know? And then, and, and, the, and the, the, the line cook is drowning with tickets, but no hay ayuda. Yeah. No hay nada. So, it, no hay so, so, there's no support. So, that, so what I learned from him. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. I learned from him that you have to support your team. 100%. You have to be in there with them. You have to be there shoulder to shoulder with them in order to, to, to get that respect. Yeah. That's it's, how they talk about chefs all day. All day they, they, they talk behind chefs' backs because they're like, yo, at the tipo down la oficina, he's in the office. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and he's exactly like he's doing a schedule, but he's over here chit-chatting with his friends yeah. while, the, while the sous chefs are down there killing themselves and going behind the line. Um, you know, that's another thing. I was a sous chef for a long time because I, I wasn't ready for for the chef position where overlooking a restaurant and and and, and thinking about scheduling, thinking about margin, thinking yeah. about salary, thinking about you know you know hiring, firing, yeah. like all that stuff. I felt like was gonna take away from my love for the kitchen, where I where I love cooking food, I love developing dishes, I love speaking yeah. to. So my coworkers, I'm telling him like, yo, get the pasta. What happened? You're in a bad mood, boy. You're in the that, restaurant now. Forget about that. You that's what's saying? called. That's what's called a leader. I, I know what you mean. I, especially those in, in even personal life, uh, business. You know, those pencil pushers, those people who don't, they don't lead by example. They're not in the trenches. It's really hard for someone to listen to somebody who hasn't walked their shoes, right? So I like that. I, give me your I, pet peeve. Give me your pet peeve in society. As we almost wrap this up, give me your pet peeve in society. My pet peeve in society right now is that no one's holding themselves accountable. Like, you 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 want to say, oh man, this 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 uh this person's a racist, or or this person is a uh, 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 you know a, a litter bug or not taking care of the planet. But then you're over here saying like, oh, I won't like those people because I don't like the way that they move. Like that's racist right there. Or, or I don't like. I, I I don't even recycle. Or you support, I, I throw or, you, or you support, or you support socialists, and they don't hold themselves. Yeah, so, they speak without having facts. Yeah. So how are you? How are you even supporting any of the statements that you make? You're you're not even doing any of that. You're, you're yeah, just exactly. you're just talking, and you're not holding yourself accountable for who you are. Like the Bible says, bro, you have 
while you're talking about my little splinter, you got a whole tree trunk in your eye. Exactly. You know? I like that. It's so, like. No, I like that. I like that. Um, if the world was ending tomorrow, your last dish would be? I would have to be my favorite dish. My mom and, you know, it would be arroz, frijole cola, and a crispy chuleta with a lot of lemon. <laughs> that that would be, that's where I, that's where I want to get descended from this planet. I, I was just salivating when you just said that. <laughs> arroz blanco, the chuleta with a lot of lemon. That sounds so good. Yeah, um, I, I, I need those frijoles colorado with the little, with the, with the, with the, the pedacito de cedo. I need that. I need yeah. all that. That's like good. one of my favorite dishes of all time that my mom taught me how to cook. And I, and I feel like that's such a well-rounded dish. Might not be the most beautiful dish, but I'm telling you, it's such a soul-fulfilling dish. It's like, it, it's, it, it hits your soul. Yeah, no, 100%. Did you vote in the past election? I did. I did vote good. in the last election. I, I always tell people, I don't care who you voted for as long as we vote. Because on this show, I want to show that we are Latinos. We're business-minded. We're assimilated. We love our culture. And we contribute to society by voting. So that's that we lead by example, right? La gente que dicen son racistas, son socialistas, and they don't vote, they just complain on social media. We call, you know, on the show, we call that come mierda, right? So you cannot be, a, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a new tagline, no come mierdas. Um, three people that are alive, you can have dinner with, who would they be? Um, three people that are alive that I, I no, want to have dinner with. Dead or alive, with. dead or alive. Oh, dead or alive. Oh, man, dead or alive. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the cliche one. I, I would like to have dinner with with Jesus. Um, I would like to have dinner with the devil. <laughs> and my last one would be uh, Anthony Bourdain. That's an eclectic dinner, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yo, for real. It'd be like, yo, he knows the best. He knows the worst. And then we got Anthony Bourdain that a he's just like G. a straight G, a, you know, a free spirit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> that is unique dinner, bro. Well, listen, yeah. Chef, I want to say it's an honor to have you on. I'm glad that we connected. I got to know more. That's what people don't realize about podcasts. Podcasts are not just about one person speaking me. It's not. It's about getting to enjoy the story. I didn't know your hustle, your, your humble beginnings to your love for fashion and sneakers. So I'm going to DM you after this with some other stuff. But I'd love to have you on the show uh, every 90 days to see how the digital food truck is going. Your, your business is going, because you definitely have the personality, you have the ambition to create such a food empire, bro. Y, y que son Latino even better, bro. So thank you for being thank on the show, bro. All thank right? You, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.